horrific story. Yeah. Um, let's um, speak now um, about about the case and just find out a bit more about it, really, because a lot of people will have listened to that, David, and they'll be thinking, H how, why, why is he being released from prison at all? And I think many people who work with Colin Pitchfork think exactly the same. Look, to set this up, uh, Colin Pitchfork is part of British criminological history. Yeah. He is the first ever person convicted through using DNA fingerprinting. Yeah. So, of course, everybody's now familiar with DNA, but this goes back to 1988, and he's going to be caught in a sweep in the local area of 5,000 mm -hmm. people whose DNA blood is going to be tested against the, the forensic evidence that was left when he rapes and strangles and murders two 15-year-old girls, mm. uh, Linda Mann and Don Ashworth. Mm. He tries to game that system. He tries to get one of his colleagues to uh, take the blood test for him, pays him 200 quid, but then that colleague talks about it and Pitchfork is going to be snared, therefore, and become the first person uh, convicted in 1987, sentenced in 1988 to at least 30 years in prison. What's interesting is that even at the time, the then Lord Chief Justice said he didn't think Pitchfork would ever be safe to release back to the public because of the sadism that was mm. within the crimes that wow. he committed. <sighs> There's a lot we could talk about here. Let's look at his... Re the full reasoning behind his release. What do we know and what, what do we don't know? Well, that's such a good question, because although the parole board would say it's become more transparent, it's opening up, it's becoming less secret, and people will be aware. In fact, we've discussed halls before, the fact that people now can get their parole hearing televised or recorded. Yeah. But, in fact, that's very rare. And in relation to why, in 2021, the parole board decided that Pitchfork should be released, there was an 1,100 paid dossier of evidence to support his release. Now, we did not get to see that 1,100-page dossier. A summary of that dossier was released to justify why the parole board thought that he was no longer a danger yeah. to women and girls. That dossier stated, and I'm paraphrasing, that he was older. At that time, he was 61. He's now 63. As one ages, the risk that one would uh, be of repeat offending reduces. But they also said he had done a number of courses in prison. However, we don't know what those courses were. Mm. And, in fact, we probably imagine that it's the sex offender treatment programme is being mentioned there, which was actually demonstrated to make matters worse rather than make matters better. To such an extent, they had to abolish it. Crucially for me, though, the parole board says that he's gone through these courses, he's no longer a danger, uh, although he had never gone through, as far as I'm aware, the regime at HMP Grendon, which operates as a psychodynamic therapeutic And community. that does work. The regime at Grendon is the one thing that's demonstrable, empirical. If you go to HMP Grendon for at least two years, you are statistically less likely to reoffend. As far as I'm aware, Pitchfork has never done that. Opt-in thing, isn't it? You have to. It's not. You're not forced to do that. No, you, you have, have to, to volunteer. Yeah, volunteer. And my worry about Pitchfork gaming the. You know, he was also con uh, convicted of perverting the course of justice in 1988. My worry is, has he also gamed the supposed rehabilitation programs that he undertook whilst in prison? When you say gamed, I don't know what, what you mean. Well, uh, he's pretending that he's rehabilitated, whereas in fact he's just using the language of rehabilitation, but saying. not actually yeah. changed his underlying oh, yeah, behaviour. Yeah, yeah. what, okay. what does the psychodynamic therapeutic... Like, what, what's that therapy involve? That, that therapy would involve, if he had gone to Grendon, every single day, every day, sitting in a small group with a trained therapist, member of staff, talking about the crimes that you've committed, mm. why you committed those crimes, owning up to committing those crimes, changing the behaviour within the psychodynamic therapeutic community as a preparation for then potentially being released in the future. So we know that there'll be conditions to this bail, um, this, this release, obviously, but we also know that he was deemed suitable for release in September 21. Uh, he was recalled to prison two months after this, he was, as it was understood that he was approaching uh, this young woman on multiple occasions. The board said that decision to recall him uh, was flawed because it was based on incorrect information. Um, 
So there will be conditions to this, presumably. You, reading between the lines, it would strike me that you don't seem to think that he should be released? Oh, I don't think Colin Pitchfork should be released, so um, I can say that quite boldly. Um, my own view was we've now got this unique element whereby he is, firstly, he is given parole, then within a matter of a few weeks, he is recalled, and he was recalled by the then Justice Secretary, Dominic Raab. It is now being stated by the parole board that that decision to recall was based on evidence that couldn't be uh, justified, stood mm. up, that they couldn't bottom out, you know, what was being said about Colin Pitchfork in the community. And they're still therefore returning to their original decision based on the 11 page, 1100 page dossier. Mm. All I would say is that, you know, I'm not in a position to be able to assess that 1100 page dossier, but I'm somebody who has done risk management all of my professional life, mm. and I would not release Colin Pitchfork. God, that's um, and, uh, but you're also right, so it's important to give people, you know, he's, as far as I'm aware, he's not going to be living in the area where I live. It's also right to give people some confidence in a process that hasn't been particularly transparent. And according the, to the parole board, he will be subject to a number of um, uh, restrictions, he'll be tagged, he'll have to live in a particular place, he'll have to report regularly to his probation officer, there'll be an exclusion zone placed around him in relation to who he can speak to and who he cannot speak to. So there will be restrictions on his behaviour back in well, the community. Well, the Parole Board have said, having considered all of the evidence, that the, the panel found that Mr Pitchfork's recall to custody was flawed and not supported by evidence. The prisoner's continued detention was no longer necessary for the protection of the public. This case is eligible for reconsideration if any party thinks the decision is irrational or unfair. And then the Ministry of Justice spokesperson said this will be a very upsetting decision for the families and a heartfelt sympathies remain with them. Pitchfork will remain in prison whilst the Lord Chancellor looks at whether to ask the parole board uh, to consider its decision. That's the other unique thing about this case. I've never known, you know, Dominic Raab recalls him. I've never known a parole board then to say, well, that recall That's was wrong. flawed. Bye. I've just got a couple of questions before we finish up. Will Pitchfork now live with anonymity or, I mean, how does it work when he gets released into a community? Well, his anonymity, there will, he's changed his name. Yeah. And I mean, I know what his changed name is, but I'm not going to say sure. it. However, um, that kind of anonymity pretty quickly breaks down because people are aware in the community. Who is this person that's just come into the community? Mm. There are also, there are images of Colin Pitchfork and what he looks like now. So it will break down pretty quickly. And secondly, mm. in terms of rehabilitation, do you think there are crimes that you just cannot be rehabilitated from? Or do you think that if he'd have chosen to go down a different way, we wouldn't be having this conversation? I'm somebody who supports the idea of rehabilitation. I've spent a lot of my life talking, as I've done this morning, about HMP Grendon, a, a prison that I have a, a great deal of uh, support for. However, I've often said that there comes a point, it doesn't matter if you're rehabilitated. Yeah. If you've done something which is so heinous, and I would regard his crimes as so mm, heinous, yeah, and, and, and committed in 1983 and 1986, so not at one time, but, um, you know, there comes a point at which we as a society have to metaphorically draw a line yeah. in the sand and say, I'm really sorry, you may have changed, but you don't deserve to come back into our community. And for the sake of the family, you know, Barbara Ashworth, the, the mother of Dawn, and the other sort of surviving relatives who've lived through this pain all their lives, yeah. you sort of go, how much can they take as a family? Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.